Hello students, this is Professor Sansom and today we'll be talking about experiment 8, our acid-base titration. The setup for this experiment is a lot longer than for most of the experiments you've done in Chem 107 and will probably take you about 30 or 40 minutes. That is totally normal, so don't worry if it seems like it's taking too long. Today you'll be using the titration equipment found in these boxes. The first thing you should do is go to the stockroom and check out a 150 milliliter beaker and a stir bar. You can set them aside for now, but remember it's very important that you use this 150 milliliter beaker for the titration and not one of the beakers from your drawer. This is necessary to ensure that the sensors are able to record the data reliably. To start setting up the equipment, attach the drop counter to the ring stand by sliding it on and then tightening it. You can move your personal downdraft, just be careful with it and don't put it on the floor. Also, don't stack the personal downdrafts. Then, insert the syringe into the clamp by sliding it up the end with the stopcocks. You can then put the clamp onto the ring stand and tighten it. While doing this, be very gentle with the stopcocks. If you break them, unfortunately you will have to pay to replace them. You'll have to rinse out the drop dispenser with distilled water. To make this easier, you can adjust the utility clamp so that the drop dispenser swings off to the side like this. We'll then place a beaker underneath the dispenser and open both stopcocks, allowing the water that you added in to drain out. Once the water is drained, you'll need to add about 10 milliliters of NaOH three separate times, making sure that you coat the walls of the syringe as it's dripping out. This will push any remaining water out that would dilute your NaOH once you're ready to start your titration. You're now ready to add the NaOH that will be used in your titration runs. Make sure that both stopcocks are closed. Then add about 40 milliliters of NaOH to the syringe. Open the bottom stopcock completely and then use the top stopcock to adjust the flow to about one drop per second. Once you get the right rate of one drop per second, you should only use the bottom stopcock to start and stop the flow. Now you can move the drop dispenser back to the original position over the drop counter with the tip just above the hole in the drop counter. We're now ready to set up the probes and meters that will be used in your titration. Once you connect them via Bluetooth on your computer, the light will flash green. Next, you'll need to attach the blue pH meter. Be very careful because you have to unscrew the bottle before you can remove the pH meter. And you should put the storage solution bottle in a place where it won't spill. Also, check right now to make sure that the globe, the glass globe at the end of the pH meter isn't exposed and there's still a blue plastic piece there to protect it. Now you'll rinse the pH meter with distilled water. And after that, you are ready to set up the software. Open the SparkView program and then click the Build New Experiment option. For your layout, you will only need the top layout with one panel. Then select the Graph button in the top left corner to display your data. For the titration, we will be measuring pH, conductivity, and temperature changes. Using the graph toolbar, click the Add Y-axis button twice so that we have three vertical axes to work with. Assign each of these axes a measurement. We'll first assign one with temperature in degrees Celsius. Then we'll include pH. For your last Y-axis, select the Conductivity 10X sensor. Unlike graphs we've created before, we will be measuring our data in terms of the volume added to our solution rather than time. Click the button under the x-axis that says time and change it to fluid volume in milliliters. If your SparkView program isn't allowing you to change any of your axes to these settings, it may be because your sensors are not plugged in or connected to the SparkLink Air unit. Now we'll calibrate the pH sensor. There are a few ways to access the calibration menu for pH. In the bottom left corner of the program, you may find four different boxes for each sensor. Click the one assigned to pH and select Calibrate Measurement. You can also access this menu by clicking the Hardware Setup button in the bottom right corner. It's the button with a cogwheel on it. A sidebar will appear and there you can select the crosshairs that are on the same line as pH. If you cannot get to the calibration menu using either of these methods, 
Your user interface may be different from the one shown and you should ask your TA for help. In the calibration menu, make sure that your settings are assigned just as we have them here and then press continue. The program will ask for two points of reference for pH. You'll need to rinse the pH meter first with distilled water. Then you'll need to find the pH 4 buffer solution. There are only two sets of buffer solutions per lab room, so be patient as they're passed around between the lab groups. Once you have the pH 4 buffer solution, put the pH meter in the solution and stir it around for at least 30 seconds. Then click Set Calibration, where it says pH 4.0. Rinse the sensor again with distilled water and then repeat the process with the pH 7 buffer solution. Now your pH meter should be calibrated. Next, you'll need to measure out about 10 milliliters of 1 molar HCl using your graduated cylinder. Remember to use your skills at measuring with a graduated cylinder. You should record the volume measurement to two decimal places, for example, 9.78 milliliters. Once you've measured and recorded the volume of acid, pour it into the 150 milliliter beaker that you checked out from the stockroom. Again, remember to use this 150 milliliter beaker instead of any beakers from your drawer. Then add six or eight drops of bromothymol blue indicator to the hydrochloric acid solution. Place the beaker on the stir plate underneath the drop dispenser and drop counter and place the stir bar you receive from the stockroom inside the beaker. Now we're going to position and adjust all of the probes. Place the conductivity meter straight into the beaker. Lean it against the side of the beaker out of the way of the stir bar. Place the temperature sensor through the small hole on the front of the drop counter. Then place the pH meter through the large hole on the front of the drop counter and adjust the height of the drop counter so that the sensors are as close to the bottom of the beaker as possible without touching the stir bar. Finally, adjust the drop dispenser so that the stopcock is about one centimeter above the drop counter. Then add enough distilled water to cover the glass bulb on the pH meter. Once all of the probes are in place, turn on the stir plate and double check that the stir bar can spin freely without hitting any of the sensors. If necessary, adjust the sensors to be higher. Next, you'll want to check the position of the drop dispenser above the drop counter. You want to make sure that the tip on the drop dispenser is centered directly above the opening in the middle of the drop counter and that it's about a centimeter above the opening. It shouldn't be too high because then the drops can splash, and if it's too low and sitting inside the drop counter, then the drops don't get counted. This is also a good time to check that the drop counter isn't dirty. There's a small green light on the top of the drop counter that will blink only as a drop passes through to be counted. If you look at your drop counter now and the light is on constantly, then the drop counter needs to be cleaned off using a Kim wipe so it can record the drops correctly. Congratulations, your setup is now complete. If you've followed along correctly up to this point, you should be able to jump to step 14 in the procedure and begin collecting data. Thanks for watching and enjoy the experiment.